Good morning. Uh, today we are going to speak to Dr. Kapiselo Mulugu. Uh, welcome, Doctor. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come in here and uh, become uh, one of your interviewers. Thank you, Doctor. And then, Doctor, can you please share with us how did you become a researcher? Thank you so much. Uh, what driven my research passion was that, uh, in my experience, being in the education department, I experienced a lot of social ills that really caused uh, me to want to somehow become a solution and contribute towards uh, improvement in the education system, looking at uh, how there's still some schools that are still underperforming and we still not as a country stand in a position to can somehow come up with strategies that can improve learners' academic performance. That is where I had the passion to now find out what can be the relevant strategy that can answer to that societal need. Where I explored the uh, school guidance and counseling as a strategy that most countries, in developed countries, are using in order to maximize learners' academic performance in schools. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Doctor, what are you currently working on? Uh, as we speak, uh, based on my background of research field from honors masters and uh, PhD, I saw the need for me to be consistent in my field of school guidance and counseling, where um, I've currently uh, designed a model which is going to be very responsive to learners' academic performance, uh, based on the overall look of the whole model that I have designed through my entire journey of finding a strategy to respond to learners' low academic performance. Uh, I'm working on, I've worked on that model. As we speak, the model is ready. Uh, right now, I'm busy looking at how I can publish uh, a number of uh, articles in order at least to bring about uh, uh, exposure to this powerful, effective strategy to respond to the need in our schools to low academic performance. So I'm um, also looking at how I um, go to engage the community through this guidance and counseling model where we will need to bring along the department uh, referring to the districts, uh, educators who are responsible for implementation of this guidance and counseling in the school because we have it, but it's just weak. So looking at how can as a university uh, bring about training to of educators who are life orientation teachers into a board so that they can be well equipped enough to keep this ill that is prevalent in schools of learners underperforming and courses not being attended because uh, I believe there is a better future in our schools. Thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, with regard to Vision 130, uh, from what we have just said, uh, now you have touched on societal impact and then looking at the academic excellence, quality and impact, how is your model or your study going to impact on academic uh, excellence? When we talk about quality, uh, which is uh, part of uh, 
they should know that we cannot talk about politics if we are not talking about being relevant to the societal ills and challenges. So I believe that as a university, we have to be very relevant to the challenges and the things that the community is experiencing. And also we have to be relevant globally on what is happening in the world, in more especially in different countries. I would love to believe that education was there is a lot to learn global wise. So this model will bring about that uh, relevance that teaching wants what they do. Six also to accomplish in terms of quality risk scholarship. So if we are gonna be responsive to the academic performance, I believe that we will have really covered um, a very crucial part in, in terms of improving the academic performance in high schools. And that remember if if we can fix the low academic performance in high schools, then we will have a better uh, students which will later become quality graduates that will also go back to the community and be influential and effective because of how we will have equipped them with uh, quality uh, education in the university. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then looking at uh, violence at schools, how does it impact on performance and what role is psychology, counseling and guidance going to play on that? Yes, thank you so much. It's, it's, it's such a very crucial lesson you ask because one of the reasons why there is uh, some schools that are still underperforming is also because of uh, rebelliousness that is found within the school's environments. And uh, that brings about unhealthy teaching and living environment. So that leads to low underperformance. So school counseling, guidance and counseling is divided into three parts of which the first one is academic. This is where we normally would focus much on teaching students, on studying skills, study areas, study attitudes. And the second part of it is it focuses on social uh, 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 part of, of a learner, where we look at uh, also the side called social parts of the learner. Why is this student, why is this learner misbehaving? Why is this learner rebellious? There are causes why such a learner is behaving that way. And you wouldn't expect good performance from such a kind of a learner who is in that state. So school guidance and counseling and psychology uh, focuses on identifying the causes of such learning bias and then also after identifying, we, we don't just identify, there are ways or procedure that is followed to bring about that learner uh, into the position of being assisted in psychosocial rights so that at the end then we can have the learner to back to their original normal state uh, which you expect from a normal human being. So it is very effective in intervention. And if we can look at how things are at school right now, there's life orientation, which is not um, which is supposed and expected according to the policy to bring about intervention in violence and uh, in behavior of learners. But because it has it, it, it is weak, it's not reaching that point of effective intervention towards that violence of, of learners with violent behavior. But school guidance and counseling comes as a solution to bring about solution uh, concerning violent learners in schools. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, are there any catalytic niche areas in your field of study? 
Yes. Um, we, we, we're going to have to talk about the nature's um, looking at exam um, preparations, um, where this is very critical uh, to can indicate that in in conscious way, a uh, academic guidance and counseling is implemented that is excellent academic performance, of which. Uh, uh, I would say in South Africa that aspect is not maximized or is not implemented uh, effectively due to many causes such as unequipped uh, educators on how to bring about that uh, uh, to to do exam uh, preparation for students because um, we have got uncle of of students of learners who do not know how to study. And uh, some of them, they just don't want to study. That is an attitude, study attitude. Some of them, they don't know how to study. That is study skill. Some of them, they don't have study habits, meaning they don't have consistency, consistency in their study time and uh, their study uh, commitment. So, it's, it's, it's a very critical part of what I believe that if that can be effected more effectively, we are going to have different kinds of schools, even those that are labeled as underperforming. Uh, I can affect that uh, uh, with the study, uh, it was experimental that was conducted in the year 2020, uh, 16 to 2018 which affirmed that the learners who were in the experiment, who were exposed in school guidance and counseling, and remember, they were selected uh, in such a way that every student was spending an opportunity to be selected. So it was not the good learners who were selected. It was a mix of students. So they were exposed to guidance and counseling, and there was another group that was not exposed. The one that was exposed in their post test they were found to be performing higher than those who were not exposed to school guidance and counseling, which is very interesting. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then coming to research, in terms of collaboration, are there any interdisciplinary collaboration to advance school guidance and counseling? Yes, we, we, we can actually talk about interdisciplinary uh, collaboration. As I'm speaking right now, there is a collaboration that we are making with UNISA. Um, I'm basically involved with uh, UNISA at the moment as we speak. And uh, UNISA proposed me that they would want us to collaborate on uh, inclusive education with uh, guidance and counseling. So guidance and counseling in inclusive education, you will know that in guidance and counseling in inclusive education, yes, they are both under psychology of education. But uh, in inclusive education, we are looking beyond guidance and counseling because we would love to go deeper into uh, other areas of, of, of inability or disability of students also to be involved. So we are actually right now uh, collaborating and uh, I, we have, we are having progress. And I would love to really promote that inclusiveness be considered also as well. Uh, it, it is in, in our institution as well more especially with other faculties and the health faculty also is, is can also uh, collaborate with the with the school guidance and counseling as well. Uh, it can bring about something which uh, may not be necessarily be able to come out if it is a standalone field of faculty. Yes. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then coming to artificial intelligence, what role can it play in your field of study? Um, 
when we talk about the world that we are living in right now, we didn't have to shy away that we are living in a world industrial uh, world that requires that we wouldn't have to shy away from technology, even if it has got some problems and cons. I uh, would love to think that, and, and I said that, um, there's a lot of, 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 of things that AI can assist regarding the field. In also looking at that, um, it can assist even in research uh, to gather about um, a variety of scholars in a moment, in a very short space of time, global wise in order to really be able to bring about the best quality research, you need to have gold round about the globe and make sure you are researching other scholars, what are they writing? Even currently, and you will agree with me that AI really is able to bring about a recent, um, and a recent scholarship into the world. Uh, so I believe that uh, it's, 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 it's very important to, to have it in place as well. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, in terms of aligning to United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? Um, yes, uh, we are very much concerned as a country that we are still looking at the fact that there's still some areas and some uh, aspects of e e e equality that are still not really taken as crucial as they are supposed to be taken. Uh, inequality is one of the goals that uh, uh, United Nations uh, Developmental Goals is looking at. I was looking at it and uh, I noticed that it's, it's, it's even, I think, number five, goal number five. And uh, inequality in schools. We still have got learners that are still, you'll find that they are left behind. Some of them have no, are not in a position to can have uh, the, the, their needs met like other learners. We have got learners that you will find that uh, they are having learning barriers, but those barriers are still not uh, addressed. So, guidance and counseling aims and looks at that closely since it looks at the implementation of CS policy. CS policy, which aims to really ensure that there's inclusivity, in that equality should be looked at closely, and they're strictly looking at that policy of which I'm very happy about that the department is really enforcing the implementation of that. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, what message can you share with young aspiring researchers? Yes, uh, that is very, very important. Um, I would love to believe that uh, if the university cannot produce scholars who are relevant and creative and responsive to the community demands and the world demands. So I think the university becomes irrelevant. Uh, but I would love to really bring about to the board scholars, more especially those who are in the education field, that we still have got serious demands of uh, having to have got to bring into the board scholars who will investigate thoroughly and effectively what are strategies in place that can bring about excellent academic performance of students or learners. Then we will be producing students that will come and uh, bring solution to the community ills to minimize students that are underperforming in school in such a way that they are not even assisted to the higher uh, education institutions. What will be the school doing if they are not they are not producing learners who are materials who are acceptable to the higher education? So we still have to if that is not research, we will have a very serious uh, burden to carry along in the field of education, more especially in school guidance and counseling, because we have to react 
to the Law Academic Performance in schools. So my inspiration is let's come together and uh, let's work together. Let's respond to this. I would love to believe in the upcoming five years we should be having the Law Academic Performance Cat in our schools through academic scholarship, and academic scholarship. Thank you. Thank you so much. When we talk about uh, quality academic scholarship, those are the attributes of a, a, a graduate yes, at the University of the Free State. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christian. And then, Doctor, apart from research, what are your other interests? Yes, uh, I am very, very passionate about uh, the youth, the young people, and parenting, not to the parents. Because um, you would have to really understand that a school guidance counselor that I am, I am after that I want to see every young person becoming the best of what we created to become a creator. So that I don't want to want to see a young person in the street who is roaming around doing nothing and causing a lot of trouble in the community. And um, bearing that in mind, I really have a great passion to engage communities. Um, I'm doing that, I've been doing that, even before my postgraduate engagement, I uh, was mentoring the young people on maximizing what they are supposed to be academically and social lives. So uh, I am working on that and, uh, and hoping that we're going to be having uh, Zoom and other the social media platform meetings, which I really am saving it on, on boards that can be done. I'm very passionate about that. Actually, there is a relationship about my hobby and my research and the brand. Thank you so much, Dr. And any advice in terms of integrating lifestyle and wellness coaching? Can you give me a message? Can you give us an advice on integrating lifestyle and wellness coaching? Okay. Um, yes. Uh, Advice I can give is that um, there is a very serious view that every human being has to be healthy emotionally, healthy psychiatric wise in order to become the best of what they get to be. So any person who is not healthy emotionally, psychiatrically, will likely not become anything good. So um, I will encourage and, and, and bring everybody on board to take note of really considering uh, to see a, 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 a school guidance counselor uh, to respond to how you feel if they are in, in, in the gym to accomplish their academic endeavors and also in their daily classes. Make it a habit that you are able to bring your, your family along, your children along, your friends along and have strategies to really make sure that you are addressing issues that are interfering with your emotional wellness. I, I believe that can really bring about the best in everybody's life. And that will bring about a better community. Thank you so much, Dr. for those inspiring ways we really learn a lot from you and the contribution that you are making to the communities we are grateful for you and having you this morning. Thank you so much, you're most welcome. Thank you.